Let's talk about Raw. I like this Raw. Oh. I liked it. And I, li- I like some of the stuff they're doing with their storytelling now. Ah, you like the pumpkins. I did like the pumpkins. I'm a sucker for that kind of stuff. So first we had Bianca Belair and Nikki Cross in a non-title match. And Bianca won. And then EO and Dakota uh, started beating down Bianca afterwards. And who should make the save but the returning Asuka and Alexa Bliss? And they hit the ring. They made the save. Everybody went nuts. They go backstage. They cut a promo. And they said, you know what? We want a title match tonight. And they said, well, we'll have to talk to the officials about that. And later we find out that the officials said, yes, that's the main event of Monday Night Raw tonight. We had Lashley backstage sitting in a chair. They were going to do this face-to-face, which uh, in UFC they do this face-to-face. But the story they're trying to tell you is, you know, this bloke's in, uh, you know, Aberdeen, Washington, and this guy over here is in... Split uh, screen, not face-to-face. In New York or whatever. Well, they're face-to-face on a split screen. But, but anyway... They're not. They're side-by-side. They're side. supposed to believe they're in totally different places and not both backstage. Well, it turns out they're both supposed to be backstage in other rooms. And Brock's not there, so Lashley starts doing his promo. And then Brock doesn't get the memo, so he goes to the ring like a dummy. And he goes, I'd rather fight! So Lashley goes out there, and they get in this big, wild, pull-apart brawl, and uh, they fight all over the place, and Hunter says if they don't break up and get away from each other, the match is canceled. And they finally get broken up, and that's your final build for the pay-per-view. Thought it was good. Yeah, I could have a bad Brock Lesnar and Bobby Lashley brawl, are you? No, you're not. No, no. Seth Rollins comes out, and the crowd cheers him. They sing his song. He gets in the ring with Austin Theory, and he works as a total, total babyface. And they had a really good match. Austin Theory, I mean, he's not bad, but you don't watch a lot of Austin Theory matches and go, my God, what a match. But that's what we had here. 15 minutes, Seth Rollins ends up hitting him with the curb stomp and pinning him. I don't know for sure, but I'm hoping that this was just a full-fledged Seth Rollins babyface turn and and we're done with whatever that wacky character was. But I guess we shall see. Very good match here. Seth Rollins and, uh, and Austin Theory. They announced Bray White for Crown Jewel. All right. They didn't announce Uncle Howdy. <laughs> Hopefully he can get through security. And we had a Roman Reigns segment. Roman Reigns comes out. Everyone's chanting Usi. He says he's going to try to be Usi tonight. And then uh, they do the the thing building up the match with uh, Logan Paul. Nobody cares. They don't care about Logan Paul. That's the truth. You're going to sneeze on it. Nope. And then uh, Roman Reigns is uh, in the middle of talking about how, you know, I'm going to beat this guy or whatever. And then out comes The Miz. And The Miz gets in the ring and he explains. And, you know, it's one of those things where I'm like... <sighs> What is the Miz doing here? But then it actually made sense because Miz comes out and he goes, you know, I'm the guy that brought this guy in. And I, I trained him and I took him under my wing. I taught him everything I know. And Paul Heyman's trying not to laugh. And he says, I've been, I've been uh, stalked by this, this fella. And if you take him out, I will tell you everything you need to know to beat Logan Paul. And Roman Reigns says, you know, what I've noticed is everyone everyone keeps talking about how Logan Paul might knock me out. But I'm going to tell you what no one's talking about. And then he does the old ba-bam, and he knocks out Miz. And Miz is left laying. And so he leaves. And then they go backstage after the break, and Miz is putting a big ice pack on his, on his face. And he's trying to get out of his match later on with Ali. And so, of course, Ali shows up and tells him that he has tiny balls. And so now Miz is he's gonna he's gonna beat him tonight, he says, with a broken jaw. So the match is on. We had Carl Anderson beating Damian Priest with a backslide. And then the heels attacked uh the baby faces. And uh they're beating him down, beating him down, beating him down. And uh the the like AJ and Gallus try to make the save, but Rhea gives the low blow, leaves him for dead. They get attacked by the Judgment Day. And so they're, they're, they're still building up the storyline. The baby faces need a big, strong, powerful woman. 
Who's it going to be? And on the house shows, it is her old friend and rival, Raquel, which Mm. actually I think would work out great. Yes. We had an MVP promo. MVP vows, I'm going to go to SmackDown and I'm going to take out Omos. Let me just throw this in there. No spoilers. You know who would have worked out great if they didn't just completely kill her by this point and who would fit perfectly with the Good Brothers? Lacey Evans. Well, would be yeah, perfect right. for that group, and they have completely ruined her. I but actually, Raquel will be fine. I honestly think Raquel will be better because, oh, yeah, I think I think she will be too. Ultimately, as we'll get to here, they they did a video package with Gargano, and what in the old days it was like <sighs> NXT was a different universe, and there was like no recognition of anything that ever happened there. In Hunter's uh, WWE, that's all canon, so it can be used in storylines, so they can play up be. the. Good. Yeah, the Raquel stuff. JBL came out and blah, 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 blah. He's a good talker, dude, but how long do I need to hear this guy bury Texas? And then Corbin buries Texas, and then Truth comes out, and he makes fun of them for what they're wearing, and they lay him out with the end of days. I could have done without this segment. What I could not have done without was Matt Riddle and Otis. Otis as the WWE 2022 version of Super Porky is just, (laughs) it's just the greatest. And, (laughs) God, I love him and Chad Gable. Shakes and weights, baby. And Matt Riddle's out there dressed as as Ezekiel with Elias. And, you know, they had a hardcore match with Pumpkins. My only complaint is they didn't break enough Pumpkins. Wait a second. You didn't say who Alpha Academy was dressed as. Well, they came out as uh, Patrick Swayze and Chris Farley from a Saturday Night Live skit from about 30 years ago. Because <laughs> Bruce Pritchard's writing this show. <laughs> and uh, I got I to gotta say, it's pretty uncanny. Especially Otis as Chris Farley. <laughs> well, that's, that's both amateur wrestlers, believe it or not. So they had a match, and uh, it was fun. We got, we got the Caterpillar for one night only. That was mm-hmm. fun to bring back. And then finally, Otis missed the Vader bomb. Elias puts a pumpkin on Otis's head. And I forget who it was, but uh, I think it was Corey goes, his head's finally the right size. (laughs) And I looked at him and I was like, you're right. Yeah, kind of. Holy smokes. (laughs) It's like, I got a a, a six-year-old and her head's way too big for her body still. But then I got a, a three-year-old who's like she got she's perfectly proportioned. It's it's uncanny. She's like a full-sized <laughs> human being, just totally shrunk down, like Masquerita Sagrada. <laughs> and then you got Otis, who's got a giant body and a tiny head. And they put a pumpkin on Otis's head. It's like, uh, where's this been all his life? <laughs> and then he gets RKO'd. It's totally missed time because he can't see a thing. The pumpkin uh... explodes. He gets pinned. Loved it. You know I did. Then Ali and The Miz got 10 minutes, and uh, listen, I've said everything there is to say about The Miz, and he's, he's, he's not great, but him and Ali had a really good match. And this was not a match where it was all Ali. Miz was working very hard. He was selling his face the entire time. I mean, he even did the spit when he got super kicked. I mean, yeah. So then uh, Ali 450 him and pinned him. So I, uh, Loomis, Loomis distracted the Miz. So then we have the true story of Dexter Loomis and the Miz. Oh, God. With Johnny Gargano and Byron Saxon. It was like, I hated it and I loved it and Ugh. I just can't decide. It was so over the top and it was so, so goofy. Bad. And, you know, some people I'm like, man, what are they doing with Johnny Gargano? And it's like, you know, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but this Johnny Gargano is a wacky guy. Like, he's not playing a character here. He's a weird, quirky, wacky geek. This is what he is. God bless him. Aren't we all? But, uh, you know, this is his thing. This is what he does. And so, anyway, uh, he tells this story that, uh, long story short, and it was a long story, Dexter Loomis married into his family in NXT. Then he got fired. Then he was on the streets because he was in poverty. (laughs) <laughs> and then Miz, because Miz likes to think he's a celebrity, a he, street drawing he hired Loomis to pretend to stalk him, to make him seem more important, because an important celebrity gets stalked. Oh. 
Oh, no. And, uh, and Byron's like, well, you know, there are a few times where, you know, they beat the hell out of each other. And, and Gargano basically says, well, you know, I think at some point he stopped paying him. So now he actually wants to kill him. Did you write this for them? This is something you would do. I mean, it probably is, but... Well, what uh, about this? Well, hey, maybe you didn't pay him. <laughs> I deal with that a lot, was... to be honest. <laughs> so anyway, uh, you know, you got the impression that Gargano was full of it here, but we're not sure. It was just too long. And it then, was a uh, little bit too long. Yeah, very quickly, Oscar and Alexa beat Dakota and Io. To win the tag team titles, really good match. Oscar and Io are awesome. New tag team champs. Thumbs up, raw everybody. What part do you love about this job, Granny? Nothing. When you when you irritate me, <laughs> you make me mad. I I guess seeing seeing you guys. When you week. needle me. Quit yeah. talking over me. Sorry. If Granny, this person asks, could leave only one thing in her will for Brian. <laughs> 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 what would it be? Rufus versus Roman Reigns, 2016. Rufus, Rufus on barricade. Rufus comes back, drops Reigns on the top rope. Rufus has a temper tantrum because only two count. Do you know that we put a clip of you on the internet last week? And these people on the internet are so dumb... That they thought that we hired an actor to play you. No. Ah, mm-hmm. uh, eh, forget yeah. about it. If you enjoy these videos, for just seven dollars and ninety-nine cents per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of the Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo, and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.